Except one thing you've already heard of this morning. Uh, I'm going to three bits of background information and three provocations. Uh, first background information then, and this is a story of parental failure, because my daughter's just picked her nap fives and she's not picked geography. Um, the reason she's not picked geography uh, is because it's not exciting. Uh, we don't get out. That, that was her explanations of geography. The, the, one, the one consolation I had, she also picked some electives at the same time, and her mum's a graphic designer, and uh, graphic communication was seventh on her list of electives, so I, I fared slightly better than her mother did uh, in, in terms of inspiration. But our school's interesting. Our, our school that my daughter goes to has the third lowest proportion in the country of S5 and S6 pupils amongst its population. It's got the third lowest attendance rate uh, in the country. Uh, the recent careers day, no university turned up to sell its wares to the school pupils. And in the parents' information evening, there were two glaring errors, spe spelling errors in the slides that were presented to parents. And the slides that were presented to parents to explain the options didn't have one of the columns on it correctly. Um, I asked the, 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 the head of year who was giving the presentation, I didn't quite understand that. He said, look, I know I put up last year's, uh, last year's options, I should have put up this year's. And it was exactly the same slides that they showed to the pupils the next day uh, my daughter reported back. My daughter lost 20 minutes of teaching time in maths this week because she was to go out and see the, the year head because she'd witnessed one of her friends that a boy had put dog poo, a bag of dog poo, in her hood. Uh, and as many classes that the Morvans experienced over the course of, of our school years have been disrupted because there isn't enough teachers, and that, not just in geography, but the subjects have been delivered by non-experts and it's stick on a video and use class time. And I'm going to come back to the significance of that in terms of what we're talking about today. I, I'm not just a, a, a geographer, I teach in a broader social sciences degree, but I'm also Commissioner for Fair Access in Scotland and appointed to that at the start of the year. And part of my responsibility then is to, to give advice to government and to give advice to universities about whether we're meeting one of the key targets of the Commission of Widening Access, and that's that by 2030, we have a proportionate number of our young people of disadvantage that progress to university uh, as first degree students. Colleges have an equivalent target as well. That work with the, community, uh, the, the Commission or for Fair Access that I've got is inherently geographical because the key metric we're using is using the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation, an area-based measure which is used then to judge individual circumstance with all the problems that that presents. Uh, there are clearly downsides to using such a, a, a metric. There's a poverty paradox whereby more people in Scotland that live in poverty live out with our most deprived areas, and within our most deprived areas there are more people who do not live in poverty rather than who live with it. There's a regional paradox in terms of access to HE that these metrics do not serve the North East well, um, considerably under representation of, of areas of multiple deprivation in the North East, Forget about Shetland and Orkney, uh, where they're not on the agenda at all. But I'd argue there's real value in that area metric for societal transformation. There's that kind of butterfly effect, that if you're widening that opportunity, if you're not so much raising aspiration, because the aspirations are there, let's not be sidetracked by that. It's all about the mechanisms to, uh, to achieve and to progress. And if we're seeing more people from our more deprived areas achieving and progressing, then that's a bigger ripple effect in these communities. So there's clearly value in that metric as well as problems. Some of my most recent, and I do apologise for what seems as if I'm selling my wares, but some of my more geographical uh, work has looked at the intersections between geography teachers, between uh, school geography, edu uh, geography educators, geography teachers in schools and uh, academics. And I was very kind of Joe came along to, to comment on the launch of, of a book that I co-edited with uh, Simon Catling, Mary Bidolf and, and Laura Hammond that looks at what we've really been talking about today, and that's the intersections between geography at its different levels. My own chapter in that book started off with a, a, somebody else's provocation, Danny Dorling from the University of Oxford, who was evidence of the fact that geography is, rightly or wrongly, a discipline that's for posh kids. Who progresses to her higher education is incredibly socially imbalanced. My own chapter in that book looked at whether geography could do something different, whether it could have a stronger social justice focus, whether the types of geography we teach, as well as thinking about the practices that <coughs> access this geography, might lead to more socially equitable outcomes. And I think it's interesting that quite rightly today we're focused on geography needs to focus more on climate justice, because that's really what matters to young people. But I also think, if we think about what the two priorities of the Scottish Government are just now towards 2030, and okay, our outgoing First Minister might be replaced by somebody who doesn't quite have the same commitment to these issues, but the two issues 
that have defined what the, the current Scottish Government has been about for a few years are working towards time climate justice and they are eradicating child poverty by 2030. And the Scottish Attainment Challenge clearly is part and parcel of that. So that leads me to three provocations at the end in terms of where we go from here. I think universities should be more people's business. That's, that's why I wanted to have the post of Commissioner for Fair Justice. That's why I'm passionately committed to working with others to help achieve that. And I think we have to think about that in terms of geography. Who is accessing geography? And we should think about it at all levels, not just in terms of progression to HE. A second provocation is I think our academics need to be less indulgent. And Joe talked about how through time those connections with schools have been lost. I think as academics, and I, I'm self-critical here as well, I think we need to have a better understanding of the wider purpose of education rather than our academic work really being a means of either educating our degree students uh, or indeed furthering our own interests by pursuing our, our academic research. I think academics need to be much more outward looking in terms of what they do. But my third provocation is one that I've not heard as much of today that I'd like, and I think we're a bit blind in here to inequalities on our doorstep, uh, and I think we really should be more sharply focused on that. There are many issues that would be highly motivational to young people. They, they could see how they could transform their own lives or the lives of others by reflecting on some of our inherently geographical issues, in which geographical tools have either been misused or have been effectively used to promote social justice. So there are three provocations. Thank you.